Hi everyone, welcome back to Bible in a Year. My name is Natalie and today we're on day 126. I'm so glad that you're here today and I hope you're doing great. We're going to be reading out of Numbers chapter 15, Isaiah chapter 10, but only verses 24 through 34 today, and then Matthew chapter 5 verses 27 through 48. And then we're going to close out the day with Psalm 78, verses 50 through 55. So let's get started with Numbers chapter 15. Here we go. Yahweh spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to the children of Israel and tell them, When you have come into the land of your habitations, which I give to you, and will make an offering by fire to Yahweh, a burnt offering or a sacrifice to accomplish a vow or as a free will offering or in your set feasts to make a pleasant aroma to Yahweh of the herd or of the flock, then he who offers his offering shall offer to Yahweh a meal offering of one-tenth of an ephah of fine flour mixed with one-fourth of a hin of oil. You shall prepare wine for the drink offering, one-fourth of a hen, with a burnt offering, or for the sacrifice of each lamb. For a ram, you shall prepare a meal, uh, for a meal offering, two-tenths of an ephah of fine flour, mixed with um, the third part of a hen of oil. And for the drink offering, you shall offer the third part of a hen of wine, of a pleasant aroma to Yahweh. When you prepare a bull for a burnt offering or for a sacrifice to accomplish a vow or for peace offerings to Yahweh, then he shall offer with the bull a meal offering of three-tenths of an ephah of fine flour mixed with half a hin of oil. And you shall offer for the drink offering half a hin of wine for an offering made by fire of a pleasant aroma to Yahweh. Thus it shall be done for each bull, for each ram, for each of the male lambs, or for the young goats. According to the number that you shall prepare, so you shall do to everyone according to their number. All who are native-born shall do these things in this way, an offering an offering made by fire of a pleasant aroma to Yahweh. If a stranger lives as a foreigner with you, or whoever may be among you throughout your generations, and will offer an offering made by fire of a pleasant aroma to Yahweh, as you do, so he shall do. For the assembly, there shall be one statute for you and for the stranger who lives as a foreigner, a statute forever throughout your generations. As you are, so the foreigner shall be before Yahweh. One law and one ordinance shall be for you and for the stranger who lives as a foreigner with you. Yahweh spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to the children of Israel and tell them, when you come into the land where I bring you, then it shall be that you, um, then it shall be that when you eat of the bread of the land, you shall offer up a wave offering to Yahweh. Of the first of your dough, you shall offer up a cake for a wave offering. As the wave offering of the threshing floor, so you shall heave it. Of the first of your dough, you shall give to Yahweh a wave offering throughout your generations. When you err and don't observe all those commandments which Yahweh has spoken to Moses, even all that Yahweh has commanded you by Moses from the day that Yahweh gave a commandment and onward throughout your generations, then it shall be. If it is done unwittingly without the knowledge of the congregation, that all the congregation shall offer one young bull for a burnt offering, for a pleasant aroma to Yahweh, with its meal offering and its drink offering, according to the ordinance, and one male goat for a sin offering. 
the priest shall make atonement for all the congregation of the children of Israel, and they shall be forgiven, for it was an error, and they have brought their offering, an offering made by fire to Yahweh, and their sin offering before Yahweh for their error. All the congregation of the children of Israel shall be forgiven, as well as the stranger who lives as a foreigner among them. For their regard to all the people, it was done unwittingly. If a person sins unwittingly, then he shall offer a female goat, a year old, for a sin offering. The priest shall make atonement for the soul who errs when he sins unwittingly before Yahweh. He shall make atonement for him, and he shall be forgiven. You shall have one law for him who does anything unwittingly, for him who is native-born among the children of Israel, and for the stranger who lives as a foreigner among them. But the soul who does anything with a high hand, whether he is native-born or a foreigner, blasphemies Yahweh. That soul shall be cut off from among his people, because he has despised Yahweh's word and has broken his commandment. That soul shall be utterly cut off. His iniquity shall be on him. While the children of Israel were in the, wild, in the wilderness, they found a man gathering sticks on the Sabbath day. Those who found him gathering sticks brought him to Moses and Aaron and to all the congregation. They put him in custody, because it had not been declared that, sh- because it had not been declared what should be done to him. Yahweh said to Moses, "The man shall surely be put to death. All the congregation uh, shall stone him with stones outside of the camp. All the congregation brought him outside of the camp and stoned him to death with stones, as Yahweh commanded Moses." Yahweh spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to the children of Israel and tell them that they should make themselves fringes on the borders of their garments throughout their generations, and that they put on the fringe of each border a cord of blue. It shall be you for a fringe, that you may see it and remember all Yahweh's commandments, and do them and that you don't follow your own heart and your own eyes, after which you used to play the prostitute, so that you may remember and do all my commandments and be holy to your God. I am Yahweh your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt to be your God. I am Yahweh your God. Some pretty stiff penalties, I should say. And again, that's what Yahweh commanded Moses. This is what God said to Moses. And so, at that time, the penalties were so heavy for those that did not do as God way, as God asked. That's a combo. God and God, God way. (laughs) It was such a high, stiff penalty for those who did not follow God's law. And it, it is no wonder that as generations passed, you know, passed on, God sent Jesus because we just couldn't do it. We could not keep up. So Isaiah 10, verses 24 through 34. Therefore, the Lord, Yahweh of armies, says, My people who dwell in Zion, don't be afraid of the Assyrian, though he strike you with the rod and lift up his staff against you, as Egypt did. For yet a very little while, and the indignation against you will be accomplished, and my anger will be directed to his destruction. Yahweh of armies will stir up a scourge against him, as in the slaughter of Midian at the rock of Oreb. His rod will be over the sea, 
and he will lift it up like he did against Egypt. It will happen in that day that his burden will depart from off your shoulder and his yoke from off your neck, and the yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing oil. He has come to Aith. He has passed through Migron. At Mishmash, he stores his baggage. They have gone over the pass. They have taken up their lodging at Geba. Rama trembles. Geba of Saul has fled. Cry aloud with your voice, daughter of Galim. Listen, Lasha. You poor Anthoth. Madmena is a fugitive. The inhabitants of Gebim flee for safety. This very day he will halt at Nob. He shakes his hand at the mountain of the daughter of Zion, the hill of Jerusalem. Behold, the Lord, Yahweh of armies, will lop the boughs with terror. The, um, the tall will be cut down, and the lofty will be brought low. He will cut down the thickets of the forest with iron, and Lebanon will fall by the mighty one. Okay, moving into Matthew five, twenty-seven through 48. And this is Jesus continuing to speak. You have heard that it was said, you shall not commit adultery. But I tell you that everyone who gazes at a woman to lust after her has committed adultery with her already in his heart. If your right eye causes you to stumble... Pluck it out and throw it away from you. For it is more profitable for you that one of your members should perish than for your whole body to be cast into Gana. If your right hand causes you to stumble, cut it off and throw it away from you. For it is more profitable for you that one of your members should perish than for your whole body to be cast into Gana. It was also said, Whoever shall put away his wife, let him give her a writing of divorce. But I tell you that whoever puts away his wife except for the cause of sexual immorality makes her an adulteress, and whoever marries her when she is put away commits adultery. Again, you have heard it. Again, you have heard that it was said to the ancient ones, you shall not make false vows, but shall perform to the Lord your vows. But I tell you, don't swear at all, neither by heaven, for it is the throne of God, nor by earth, for it is the footstool of his feet, nor by Jerusalem, for it is the city of the great king. Neither shall you swear by your head, for you can't make one hair white or black, but let your yes be yes, and your no be no. Whatever is more than these is of the evil one. You have heard that it was said, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. But I tell you, don't resist him who is evil. But whoever strikes you on your right cheek, turn to him the other also. If anyone sues you or takes away your coat, let him have your cloak also. Whoever compels you to go one mile, go with him too. Give to him who asks you, and don't turn away him who desires to borrow from you. You have heard that it was said, you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I tell you, love your enemies. Bless those who curse you, do good to those who hate you, and pray for those who mistreat you and persecute you, that you may be children of your Father who is in heaven, for he makes his Son to rise on the evil and the good, and send rain on the just and the unjust. For if you love those who love you, what reward do you have? Don't even the tax collectors do the same? If you only greet your friends, 
What more do you do than others? Don't even the tax collectors do the same? Therefore, you shall be perfect, just as your Father in heaven is perfect. I would say that is a very good one for me today. <laughs> I'm in a situation where um, I'm being pushed against and my knee-jerk reaction is to be, okay, fine, and to uh, withhold love and to withhold patience and to withhold kindness and to just walk away. But that's not what I learned today. I continue on with love and kindness and patience. Psalm 78, 50 through 55. We're still breaking up this chapter. He made a path for his anger. He didn't spare their soul from death but gave their life over to the pestilence and struck all the firstborn in Egypt, the chief of their strength in the tents of Ham. But he led out his own people like sheep and guided them in the wilderness like a flock. He led them safely so that they weren't afraid, but the sea overwhelmed their enemies. He brought them to the border of his sanctuary to the mountains which his right hand had taken. He also drove out the nations before them, allotted them for in an, an hmm, allotted them for an inheritance by line, and made the tribes of Israel to dwell in their tents. Yes, the Lord will take care of those who harm our good intentions. I do believe that, but every now and again, I forget it. <laughs> so on we go. Uh, thank you so much for stopping by today. I hope you have the most wonderful day and please come on back for tomorrow, which will be day 127 and I will see you then. Bye.